I'm Mrs. Fuller. Today we're going to be reading a story called The Bunions, written by author Audrey Wood, illustrated by David Shannon, and read with permission from Scholastic Incorporated. The Bunions is a type of a story called a tall tale. A tall tale is a fictional or made-up story that stretches the truth. As I read today, I want us to listen for elements that make this story a tall tale. Those include, the main character has a regular job, but is larger than life in size and abilities. Details in the story are exaggerated beyond belief. And exaggerated means to make larger or to stretch. When things are exaggerated in a story, that's also called a hyperbole. The main character encounters a problem and solves it in a funny way. And the characters use common language and resemble everyday people. Also, as we read, I'd like us to focus on our big question, which is what processes change the earth? So let's listen as the Bunyan family introduces us to several of the amazing landforms across the United States. And as I read, I want you to think about, is the process used to make this landform true or is it exaggerated? Let's get started. Storyteller's note. Now I suppose you've heard about the mighty logger Paul Bunyan and his great blue ox named Babe. In the early days of our country, Paul and Babe cleared the land for settlers so farms and cities could spring up. And you probably know that Paul was taller than a redwood tree, stronger than 50 grizzly bears, and smarter than a library full of books. But you may not know that Paul was married and had two fine children. One day when Paul Bunyan was out clearing a road through the forest of Kentucky, a great pounding began to shake the earth. Looking around, Paul discovered an enormous hole in the side of a hill. The lumberjack pulled up an acre of dry cane and fashioned a torch to light his way. Paul climbed inside the hole and followed the sound underground for miles until he came to a large cavern glistening with crystals. By the flickering light of his torch, he saw a gigantic woman banging a behemoth pickaxe against a wall. It was love at first sight. I'm Carrie McGinty, the gigantic woman said. I was sitting on the hill when my lucky wishbone fell down a crack into the earth. I've been digging all day trying to find it. With a grin on his face as wide as the Missouri River, Paul reached into his shirt pocket. I've got one too, he said, pulling out his lucky wishbone. Marry me, Carrie, and we'll share mine. Carrie agreed, and their wedding invitations were mailed out right away. The invitations were so large, only one needed to be sent to each state. Everyone could read them for miles. The invitations said, you are cordially invited to the mammoth wedding of Paul Bunyan and Carrie McGinty. The couple were married in the enormous crystal chamber that Carrie had carved. And after the ceremony, folks began to call it Mammoth Cave. The giantist had dug more than 200 miles, making it the longest cave in the world. So the name fit perfectly. Paul and Carrie settled down on a farm in Maine, and soon there were two new bunions. While Paul Bunyan traveled with his logging crew, Ma Bunyan worked on the farm and cared for their jumbo boy named Little Jean and their gigantic girl named Teeny. One morning when Paul was home between jobs, Ma Bunyan cooked up a hearty breakfast of pancakes and syrup. When Teeny was wrestling with her big purple kuba named Slink, she accidentally dumped a silo of syrup on her head. Teeny's hair was so sweet, bears crawled in and burrowed deep into her curls. Try as they might, Ma and Pa Bunyan couldn't wash them out. We'll need a forceful shower of water to get rid of those varmints, Ma Bunyan declared. Pa Bunyan had an idea. He placed his daughter on Babe and he led them to the Niagara River in Canada. Their gargantuan father scooped out a huge hole in the middle of the riverbed. As the great river roared down into the deep hole, Teeny cried out in delight, Niagara Falls! 
Teeny showered in the waterfall and the pesky bears were washed downstream. I want you to look at that picture and how large Teeny is compared to the people on the boat. So the characters in the story are larger than life. You can see that in the drawings. When little Gene was five, he wanted to work too. So he followed his paw out to his logging camp in Montana. Thinking his son was too young to do much of anything, Paul set little Gene down in a barren canyon in Utah to play for the day. When the lumberjack went to fetch him, he couldn't believe his eyes. Little Gene had carved out the canyon into a wonderland of fanciful shapes. Pa Bunyan got tongue-tied and said, that's a mighty Bryce Nanyan, Coy. I mean, that's a mighty nice canyon, boy. Somehow, part of the mix-up stuck. To this day, the canyon is known as Bryce Canyon. After all the sculpting, little Jean's shoes were full of sand. Pa knew Ma Bunyan wouldn't want her clean floors dirtied up. So she told little Jean to sit down and empty out his shoes. The sand from little Jean's shoes blew away on the eastern wind and settled down a state away. It covered a valley 10 miles long, making sand dunes 800 feet tall. Everyone knows that's how the great sand dunes of Colorado came to be. One summer, little Jean and Teeny wanted to go to the beach. Ma Bunyan told them to follow a river to the ocean, but all the rivers flowed west back then, so they missed the Atlantic Ocean and ended up on the other side of the country instead. Ma Bunyan tracked them out to the Pacific Ocean, where she found Teeny riding on the backs of two blue whales, and little Jean carving out 50 zigzag miles on the California coast. When Ma Bunyan saw what her son had done, she exclaimed, What's the big idea, sir? From that time on, the scenic area was known as Big Sur. Ma Bunyan knew she had to put up a barrier to remind her children not to wander off. So on the way home, everyone pitched in and built the Rocky Mountains. Teeny gathered up and sorted the rivers, letting some flow east and others west. After that, the children had no trouble following the eastern rivers down to the Atlantic Ocean. And when they wanted to go exploring, Ma Bunyan would call out, now don't cross the Continental Divide, children. The best thing about camping is sleeping outdoors. The worst thing is not having enough hot water. That's why the Bunyans always camped in Wyoming. By the time their camping years were over, Ma Bunyan had poked more than 300 holes in the ground with her pickaxe and released tons of hot water from geysers. But Ma got tired of poking so many holes. So she made a geyser that blew every hour on the hour. After that, there was a steady supply of hot water to keep the giant's clothes and dishes sparkling clean. Teeny named the geyser Old Faithful and to this day, Old Faithful still blows its top every hour in Yellowstone National Park. As our great country grew up, so did the Bunyan children. When the kids left home, Mom and Pa Bunyan retired to a wilderness area where they still live happily. So today our story is a tall tale, a fictional or made up story that stretches the truth. Let's see how our story fits as a tall tale. The main character has a regular job. In the story, what is Paul Bunyan's job? That's right, he's a lumberjack. And the characters in the story are larger than life in size and ability. We saw the picture of Teeny compared to the picture of the men in the boat. Details in the story are exaggerated beyond belief. One exaggeration is that little Jean's shoes were full of sand that created a sand dune 800 feet tall. The main characters encounter a problem and solve it in a funny way. 
when Teeny dumped syrup in her hair and it got full of bears, that's a problem. And they were able to wash it out when Paul Bunyan created the Niagara Falls. The characters in the story use everyday language and resemble everyday people. The Bunyan family certainly did that. Thank you for learning with us today. And see if you can find time to do some research on the landforms that we learned about in the story and see if you can figure out what process was used to create those landforms. I'll see you next time on Read, Write, Roar.